stand up. Stretch up, stretch up, stretch up, stretch up, stretch up. Everyone, turn around in a circle. One time. And take a deep breath. All right, everyone stand with your hands on your hips. We're going to do a silly song. You ready for the silly song? Yeah. It's called The Button Factory. <laughs> I want everyone to try to stay right where you are. Don't make your movements too big. You ready? Here we go. It goes like this. Hi. Just repeat after. Uh, let me sing it, and you just do what I do. And when you figure out what you can say, you can say it with me, all right? So I'm going to sing it, and you just go along with the movements. Here we go. Hi. Hi. My name is Joe. And I work in a button factory. I have a house and a dog and a family. And one day, my boss came up to me. He said, Joe, are you busy? I said, no. So he said, work with your hand. <coughs> Hi, my name is Joe. And I work in a button factory. I have a house and a dog and a family. One day, my boss came up to me. He said, Joe, are you busy? I said, no. So he said, work with your other hand. Hi, my name is Joe, and I work in a button factory. I have a house and a dog and a family. One day, my boss came up to me. He said, Joe, are you busy? I said, no. So he said, work with your leg. Hi, my name is Joe, and I work in a button factory. I have a house and a dog and a family. One day, my boss came up to me. He said, Joe, are you busy? I said, no. So he said, work with your other leg. <laughs> Hi, my name is Joe, and I work in a button factory. I have a house and a dog and a family. One day, my boss came up to me. He said, Joe, are you busy? I said, no. So he said, work with your bottom. Hi, my name is Joe, and I work in a button factory. I have a house and a dog and a family. One day, my boss came up to me. He said, Joe, are you busy? I said, no. So he said, work with your head. Hi, my name is Joe, and I work in a button factory. I have a house and a dog and a family. Family. One day, my boss came up to me. He said, Joe, are you busy? I said, yes. <laughs> Give yourselves a hand.
Professor Angel, are you ready to have some fun with science today? Today we're making play clay. You ask, what's play clay? It's clay that you can play with. 
So before you start with your experiment, you want to make sure you have an adult with you to assist you. First, you want to start out with a plastic bowl, a plastic knife, spoon, or popsicle stick for mixing. You want to take a half a cup of flour, put it in your bowl, then you want to take a quarter of a cup of water, add a little at a time, you want to just keep adding. And then we're going to add the salt. So you need a quarter of a cup of salt. And we're just going to keep mixing. And then let's continue to add our water. Now let's do the fun part. Use our hands. So you really want to get all that flour off the sides of the bowl and really just incorporate the salt, the water, and the flour together until it makes a nice firm ball. And make sure you always have newspaper, paper towels, or something underneath your bowl to help with the messes. So now, you'll have a ball of play clay. And right now my play clay is kind of plain. But what you can do to make yours more fun is add some food coloring to it. One or two drops will do just the job. You can mix red with yellow and make orange or any other combination. Just knead it together. Just mix it together. And then you have your very own play clay. You can let it sit for 10 minutes to get a little bit stiffer, and you can start making creations. You can build a house, make logs, or do anything you want with it. So hopefully, you'll have lots of fun with your play clay. Until next time, see you later. And remember, science is always fun. Hi, I'm Tara Nicole Azari with Did You Know That? Today, Valentine's Day is one of the most popular holidays in America. It's the day where we exchange candy, gifts, and cards with the people that we love just to let them know that we care. In fact, 25% of all cards sent in each year are Valentine's. But did you know that Valentine's weren't commercially produced in America until the 1840s? Saint Valentine was a Roman priest who held secret marriage ceremonies for soldiers and their brides. After Emperor Claudius II, known as Claudius the Cruel, had prohibited marriage for young men. While adored by the young people of Rome, St. Valentine was arrested and eventually executed on February 14th, 270 AD, for his crime of marrying young soldiers. In 469 AD, Pope Gelasius proclaimed February 14th to be a feast day in honor of St. Valentine. During the Middle Ages, St. Valentine became one of the most popular saints in England and France. Valentine's Day was associated with romance and courtship. By the 18th century, gift giving and exchanging handmade cards on Valentine's Day had become common in England. Eventually, this tradition became popular in American colonies and, in the 1840s, the first American Valentine's Day greeting cards were created by Esther Howland, who was known as the Mother of Valentines. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm Tara Nicole Azarian with Did You Know That? Until next time, stay smart. Are you ready to paint? I'm gonna need my paintbrushes. Uh, Lily, 
That's not a paintbrush, is it? What is that? A toothbrush! Is that a toothbrush? Oh, you get it! Look, she did it! Great job! That's a toothbrush. What do we do with the toothbrush? We brush our hair. We do brush our teeth. You guys all brush your teeth today, right? Did everybody brush their teeth today? You did? Those are paintbrushes. Oh, those are paintbrushes. I want to do my toothbrush test. You know, it's really important to brush your teeth at least twice a day, right? Let's, let's give her the toothbrush test. Can you blow on my flower? Go. Oh. What happened? Are you sure you brushed your teeth today? Are you sure? All right, that's okay. I believe you. That's just a silly flower. What's your favorite color? Pink. Oh, do you like pink? A pink, a pink fairy princess. You got it. Well, I so happen to have pink, and I have a mirror, and you can see what you look like now. And then we'll show you when you're all done, okay? And we're gonna do some pink. And what is another color you like? I think that you have. Oh, all right. Well, I like that you know what you want. So we're gonna do some pink, but before we make you a fairy princess, we're gonna give you some blush. So can I see a big smile so I can see those cheekbones? Oh, that's gorgeous. Great. Okay. And now we're gonna give you your crown. So let's make a heart. Pop goes the weasel. <laughs> okay, look at me, kitty. You see that jewel on my nose, you guys? If you look at my jewel, I can see your face perfectly. I'm going to hold your forehead. I'm going to make a heart. You ready? Good tickle, but it's not going to hurt. Oh, we got a heart in your favorite color, pink. And this is going to be part of your crown. So you're going to get a pink heart, and then we're going to make some jewels. Because a princess crown has to have jewels, right? Oh, my goodness. Do you guys see? Absolutely. Oh, we'll do red in the middle of the heart, yes. That is looking so, and we'll put some rubies, right? Rubies are a precious stone. Oh, and then we'll do sparkles when we're all done, okay? You, yeah, go ahead, you can take whatever doggy. I think there's one by Michael, too. All right, and then, oh, don't touch it, put your hands down. I'll show you when you're all done. We're gonna give you some eyeshadow, okay? You hear it go pop? Sometimes balloons do that. Can I give you some eyeshadow? Oh, this is going to look so pretty. Today you're going to be Princess Isabella. Now, can you pretend like you're sleeping for me? Close your eyes. Okay, pretend like you're sleeping nice and soft. There you go. I know it feels really funny, but it's going to look so pretty when I'm all done. I'm going to do this side. You're doing such a great job. You can open your eyes now. Wow, don't touch them. Keep your hands down. How old are you? Give me five. Five. How are you? How's my balloon makers doing over there? You're supposed to start with the knot, silly goose. It's going to pop. If you don't start with the knot, when you keep twisting, it's going to eventually go pop. Because then you're going to run out of room. Let's give you some beautiful eyelashes. And then we'll do your lips. What a special day here at Kid Time. Oh, my goodness gracious. We're going to give you some pretty eyelashes. Okay, can you look that way at the kid? Awesome. Wow, let me get some more paint. Isn't she looking beautiful? <laughs> Did you learn how to make a doggy today? Not yet, right? It's okay, don't touch it. Oh, we gotta do some sparkles and some lipstick. Bubbles always wipes the lipstick cooties on the towel, but being that this is a brand new lipstick, do you want pink? Yes, I have. You want this one? No, it's a magic blow. You're not supposed to really blow, they're already blown up. You want pink? Yes, okay, I'm not gonna wipe it because it's brand new. So, ah. Uh, uh, what happened? It sounds like firecrackers in here. Pop, pop, pop. Pop goes the weasel. <laughs> look at you. You look gorgeous. Now we're going to wipe it off. And we save the best for last. The sparkles. And we're going to need someone to go next after Princess Isabella. 
You want Lily to go next. Lily's gonna go. Lily, are you gonna be what? You gonna be a Dalmatian dog? A rock star? Oh my goodness. I want you to close your eyes and put sparkles on you. Awesome. I'm gonna do the other side. Okay, keep them closed. I'm gonna do your crown. Awesome. You are so pretty. Oh, absolutely. One, you bring it up here and I can do it for you. Down here. Sparkles. Wait, let's show her what she looks like. Oh my goodness. Who is that, princess? You look funny. Winter means that it gets cold out and sometimes it snows. One time when it snowed, I threw snowballs at my dad. And then my dog, um, Crumpet, she gets little snowballs all stuck to her fur. So my mother has to try to pull them out. One told me is that it's snowing like snow. When it was last snowing, me and my brother, we kept throwing snowballs at the back of our dad's coat. <laughs> my favorite part of winter is winter break, when we get out of school to take a break. Um, because it gives me a break to cool down off of homework. I like the snow one, so I can, because I get to play in snow, and I get to, and then I get to kick, and then I get to, and then I get to dig, and I get to play with snowballs, and then I get to roll them, and then, and then I get a snacks. I get a stack snowballs on top and make a snowman. And I like winter because I can make snowmen. My favorite part about winter is that we don't have to go to to school and. It be cold, so we won't like have to go nowhere, and we can stay inside of the house. Mostly winter because of the snow, because we get to sit near the fire and sit and heat, drink hot chocolate, <laughs> oh, awesome. and s'mores. I love winter because we get hot chocolate and cookies, and we get to play in the snow and build snow, snowmans and have snowball fights and we have, get to build forts and it's just, it's a lot of fun for me because we get to give and we get to thank people and it's just, it's a good time. I'm Carly Williams and this is Carly's Critters on Kid Time TV. It may look like I'm on an African safari, but actually I'm at the Lazy Five Ranch in Mooresville, North Carolina. Best known for their black and white stripes, this is the African equid, or zebra. They can weigh up to 800 pounds. Did you know that a zebra's stripes helps disguise it in the grass? I know that seems crazy since grass isn't black or white, but it helps disguise them from their main predators, the lion, which happens to be colorblind. There is no mistaking what you're seeing when you spot this horse-like animal with black and white stripes. Every zebra has its own unique pattern of stripes, as unique as a human's fingerprint. Why do zebras have stripes at all? Most scientists think it is a form of camouflage. The patterns make it difficult for predators to spot them. I'm here with the Lazy Five Ranch expert, Sarah Beth. So I've always been curious about a zebra's stripes. Can you tell me a little bit about this? Mm -hmm. The zebras are born with their stripes. It's just like a fingerprint that we would have. Um, all, the, all the stripes are different on each individual zebra. Um, the baby zebras are born with brown stripes. Um, the older they get, the darker their stripes get. What do zebras eat? The zebras eat the grain that we have here at the park. It's high in protein and it, it fulfills all their needs that they'd get from the wild. Um, they also eat alfalfa hay, which is, um, you know, this is a high protein kind of grass that they would, would graze on in the wild. Zebras are ungulates, which just means hooved animals. Zebras are herbivores and love to graze in green pastures. Did you know that zebras sleep standing up or that they have a very keen sense of hearing? Like most ungulates, the zebra has its eyes on the sides of its head, so it has a wide view. They have excellent eyesight. 
They can see in color and at night. Well, now you know some fun facts about our black and white friend, the zebra. I'm Carly Williams for Carly's Critters on Kid Time TV. What's a cop's favorite cupcake? I don't know. A cop cake. <laughs> <laughs> How can you tell if an elephant's under your bed? How? Because your nose is touching the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> what? What is a bumblebee that talks in a low voice? I don't know. A bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange who? Aren't you glad I didn't say banana? <laughs> what? What is a bumblebee that talks in a low voice? I don't know. A mumblebee. <laughs> How do you catch a monkey? Hanging upside down in a tree and making banana noises. How'd you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good.